Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mind Your Markets, the channel that helps people navigate the world of trading and DeFi. Why am I talking like this? I have no idea. But what I do know is my name is Brian and I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. And if you happen to find yourself in a live market with live funds, well, that risk is yours and yours only. All the videos and streams on this channel are free of charge. There's no memberships. We're not looking to sell you anything but a good time. And even that's not guaranteed. But what is guaranteed is every Wednesday we do a live stream at 2 p.m. So if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, share a video, or don't. That's cool too, but let's get it going. Let's jump into the market because since the last time I've seen you, we did some things in the market, I tell you what. We were jumping around and I'm gonna show you why it's important to check your levels and anticipate price at certain levels, right? It's not always going to do what you think it is. All right, let me take a little sip of water here. All right, let's start with Bitcoin on the daily chart. Again, when we talked last week, we were looking to come down into this zone to sweep out some of these lows. I think we talked about in the last video that I wouldn't be surprised if we came up here right before the halvening and took out this high first and then came down. But it looks like from this range, I actually think this is more bullish price action because you're leaving the even highs up above, right? So... A lot of times what you'll do, the market makers will take the liquidity. And I think that this is a perfect, you know, if I was controlling the markets, this is probably what I would do as well, is I would want to take this liquidity coming into the halvening. People start thinking, oh, no, we're dropping down, we're dropping down, when really we're just coming in to fill some of this price action in this gap. Here. So, again, sweeping these lows, liquidity, I had it pinned out this morning. Looks like we're already dipping through. I'd still like to see and take this low out. Again, people have their stops below these lows. Right. So the market moves off of liquidations and people stops and things like that. So, again, this blue box still holds here. And again, you don't need to blindly buy when we get in here. You'll see, you know, on a lower time frame, is it making bullish price action? Am I wanting to enter in once we get into the level of interest? Again, we have even lows built up down here. Everything's fair game at this point. But overall, we're obviously still in a bullish market. There's no denying that we've been making higher highs. But again, you need to rebalance price and you need to kind of cool off the engines. You can't go straight up forever. Jumping on to Ethereum, we came down and hit the price we've kind of been looking for for a while. It's been holding it nicely. We'll have to see what happens today. Um, again, we don't want to see a candle body close below this level. We've been holding it, I mean, literally about to the dollar here. None of these candles have closed below this area of interest here. We did wick down, come take some more liquidity into this gap here. But again, we'll have to see nothing bullish showing up yet. But this was the area sort of, of interest that we we're looking for. If we continue down, we'll start, you know, down here is another consolidation area and another gap that we could fill in um, down here. But as you guys can see, I mean, how many times has the market come down? It takes the lows out, boom, right there, and then it continues on to go higher. So again, that's sort of what we're looking for in the market. Those are the signatures in price that allow price to then move higher, right? You need to take liquidity in order to move things higher. If you just go straight up for forever, well, the longs are the only ones making money. And yeah, that's great for your spot portfolio, but that's not how markets work. And that's not how the markets move. So Ethereum, again, we're holding this level for now. We'll have to see how this daily candle reacts here. If we start closing below it, I'm going to expect some lower prices. Doesn't mean we can't then come kick back up here to take out some internal range liquidity here and then continue on lower. But again, I want to see this level hold. I like I like the price action here that we have so far. But again, we'll have to see how this daily candle closes here. Next up, we have our XRP. We've taken the first level of liquidity we touched on. I said, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to call, you know, moon boys, moon shots. When everybody else is talking that we're going to the moon, chances are we're not. Okay, keep that in your back pocket. So when everybody over here, oh, we're going, we're going to ten dollars. We're going. Come on, man. Jeez, please. But anyways, this was the first level. I said we got to come take some of this liquidity. I wouldn't be surprised. We still see forty cents. Call me crazy, but I could even see us coming down here and taking out these lows. It's all going to be dependent upon once we get down to this level. I don't think this downtrend is done. I think we come down to at least fill in this gap below these lows over here. Again. We did take, this was a pretty key low here. 
you know, a lot of people would have put their stops after this low was taken. But again, it's just building up more liquidity. One, two, three. And again, the thing to know about equal lows in, in, in a relatively similar spot is not everybody has their stop directly below this low, right? They may have it down below this low and think they're safe. They may have it over here. You know, so there's different areas where people are going to have their stop losses. And the market makers know that. But again, I still, I'd still like to see at least 40. Again, there's nothing saying that we can't come all the way down to 20 to fill some of this in. Because again, when you see, let's just take a look at the true reversal levels, right? Reversal levels are very violent. They're very quick in, quick out. Okay, that's just, again, there's more to it than that. But if you can just grasp that concept of how the market, when it turns around, just study where it turns around and how it looks, you'll be miles ahead of the competition without knowing anything about trading. If you can just understand that when price is hitting and taking out levels that look more even like these, and yes, yeah, 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 this was the SEC, blah, 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 whatever you want, whatever story and narrative you need to tell yourself. But this area of liquidity is a very lucrative area for the market makers. They can come take everyone out, especially after a big move up like that. OK, so again, I just I didn't like this. I don't like all these lows being built up like this. And there's a lot of people out there. I don't want to say a lot of people, but there's people out there, you know, drawn, you know, trend lines like this and saying, oh, you know, oh, and now it's broken. Right. So now they're going to turn bearish. So if I'm a market maker. Right. And I and, and everybody's saying, oh, we rejected off of that kind of come down here and then push through. Right. That would be much more lucrative for the market makers, because everybody who thinks that this trend line breaks and we're going to seven cents or whatever is going to get stopped out. The market makers are constantly working in the opposite direction of where you think they're going. That's how they can move the markets and be profitable. OK, so again, we'll have to wait and see for more price, more prices and things like that. But I'm not convinced that the down is done yet. Uh, definitely overall bullish. There's nothing. I'm not trying to sit here and say we're going into a deep bear market or anything like that. We just, you know, we need to pull back. We need to take some liquidity levels and then we'll kind of continue on. But my next level, again, we're looking for kind of that 40 cents area and we'll see how we react from there. And the reason I say let's see how we react from there is let's go over to ABEX. This is a prime example. This blue box is where we were talking about potentially being bullish. Now, what do you notice about when the blue box is filled, it's violent through, right? It doesn't even mess around. When they cut through a level, they cut through the level, right? So if I drop down to like a four hour time frame, there's no buying opportunity in here, right? When this gap is completely filled, it's just like a knife through hot butter. It's It just knifes through, right? So that's why I say don't just set limit orders and say, oh, well, Brian said, you know, Brian said that this is a level that, you know, it's got. No, I didn't. I said this is the level of interest. It doesn't mean that the market has to stop there. But what I will say is the market will definitely show you its hand when it gets to a level of interest. OK, so again, what I mean by a level of interest is, like, OK, when we go below this low here, it doesn't mean you have to automatically buy below that low because you can continue down. But when you get to the lower time frames, what do you notice about once we took out this low here, we made an inversion fair value gap here. And again, if I'm saying things that you guys aren't familiar with, you can go to the channel, check out all the videos. I explain all these different terms and things like that through shorts, through other videos and things like that. But once we go through a level of interest, we're bullish, right? That's number one. We've gone below an old low. We're bullish. We've gone below an old low. Now let's see if there's a signature in price to violate this once bearish fair value gap, right? So this used to be a bearish fair value gap right here. From this low, from this high here to this low here, this was a bearish fair value gap. Well, when you violate it with a candle body close above, right, on this candle right here, this now becomes a bullish inversion fair value gap. Why? Trend was bullish. We went below an old low. And then we violated 
a bearish fair value gap, making this a bullish inversion fair value gap. This now becomes real support. Okay, and as you can see, you don't have a candle body close below this. So again, identify the trend, look for key levels, right? So this is what I said with Abex. We are bullish, right? There's no denying that we've been in a bullish market. So this is a level of interest. This is a level of interest. It's not a level of entry. It's a level of interest. Once we get there, how do we react? We rip right through it. No need to buy. You wait. Okay. What could be our next level of interest? Well, we have this low over here, right? Let's go back to a daily. We have this level of interest down here, which comes back in to fill some of this gap in. So this is this would be an area that I'd be looking for next, right? Because what I saw on the four hours, as you can see, okay, we're in a bullish market, right? We went below this low here. Okay, my eyes immediately go to this fair value gap from this low to this high. Okay, let's see if we violate it. We don't. We don't have a candle body close above. That's why I put this X here. This means that we got to the fair value gap and we rejected it. Price doesn't want to go higher. This is what I'm talking about, what I mean by a footprint in price. Okay? So when you get back to those levels, you can look to see, okay, are we pushing through this, right? Bullish trend, went below an old low. Where's the inversion fair value gap or the break of structure? It doesn't exist, right? This, do this gets projected with a wick. That means they're still willing to sell once we get back to this price level. They're not quite ready to push through this and change direction. So again, what does that mean for me as a buyer that's looking to buy these assets in a bullish market? Well, I go to the next level of interest, which would be down below this low. Or give me some price action that shows me that we're done going down. Okay, so that's the key takeaway from all of this is... Find your point of interest, but don't just blindly buy or blindly sell anything like that. You have to go in once you get to these levels and make a decision based off of that. All right. So that's Avix. Let's jump over to Telos. Telos, sort of same thing here. Once we came down through here, again, we've talked about the bullish inversion fair value gap once you get it. I also forgot to mention, I've said it in other videos, but when you get a bullish inversion fair value gap, you want it to be by itself. What do I mean by by itself? Well, there's a gap between here and here. There's a gap between here and here. That's not, those aren't the inversion fair value gaps that you want. You want some sort of inversion fair value gap that's by itself. Okay. And again, what is the target of a bullish inversion fair value gap? The next most recent high. So as you can see, Telos had one right here, right? We went below these lows. Follow me here. We went below these lows. And then we inverted this fair value gap that caused the run on the lows. Where's the target? Right above this high. And where does it go? Right to literally to the tip. You have to take profit. You have to take profit. If you're going to trade an inversion fair value gap model, you can't expect this to go to $2 just because of this inversion fair value gap. You need to then see, okay, inversion fair value gap happens. My target is here. I have to take profit here. Some profit. And then you can set your stop loss at break even from there. If that's that's a trading model, right? That's a trading model that you can use. It's just look for a run on liquidity. Look for a fair value gap turned to an inversion fair value gap. And then target the most recent high or low if you're shorting. Okay? So again, as you can see, it literally just comes to that, takes that liquidity out, and then continues on down. So for Telos, for me, overall macro view, again... We'll have to see how we react over here. We're still obeying this fair value gap here with just wicks. We have yet to push through this after taking the low. So again, I'm not ready to jump right in. I would like to see maybe a little more of this filled in. If you go to a higher time frame like the daily, this has been a huge level right here. So I mean, they're just filling this price action in. Look at all these gaps through here. I and mean, they're just coming to rebalance it. You gotta cool off even in bull markets. Go look, in the, go look in the past. There's 20 to 40% pullbacks. Happens every cycle. Don't get shaken out, right? Pay attention. Stay involved. But don't get shaken out and be like, oh, here comes the bear market again. We're nowhere near that. We're just pulling back. It's part of the cycles. But yeah, I'd like to see maybe one more dip through here, and then we'll look, we'll look for the reaction from there and see if we can catch something 
off of that mantle. <clears throat> Again, we talked about this last week. It did take that high, but what did I say? When you break highs, I don't want to see wicks break highs. I want bodies. I want bodies breaking highs. Come up here, we wick that, and I said, okay, we inverted, right? And again, I'm not making this stuff up, guys. You can go check the last video. And again, I'm not trying to be like, I'm the best trader of all time. But there are signatures in price that continue to play over and over and over again. They don't change. They can't change. Because it's, it's the fundamental basis of liquidity. It's how the market moves, okay? It's not like I'm some guru that knows something that nobody else does. It's just that I became obsessed with understanding this stuff, right? To the point where it was like, it became an obsession, but I enjoyed it. I mean, that was my thing. So whatever, I'm weird. Anyways, back to the point, went on a little rant there. It's all good. It's going to happen. We went above this high, closed, not with a body. We wicked above and completely rejected. Okay. And then you have this fair value gap here that gets inverted. Boom. That's where you sell. Okay. Again, take liquidity with a wick, inversion fair value gap. Let me zoom in here so you guys don't think I'm making it up. Fair value gap from this low to this high, right in here, okay? Right in here, from this high to that low, to this low right here, fair value gap. Gets inverted on this candle right here, right? Candle body close below the high of this one. Boom, sell on this candle. And where are we targeting? That low, baby. We're coming back in. I told you we we're going to come visit this, right? I didn't like all this liquidity. That trend line liquidity is going to get taken out. Coming back to fill in this breaker over here, fill in this price inefficiency here. And that's what we've done, so on and so forth. I do like Mesa Mantle. I will say we've inverted this fair value gap, even though it's very small. And you guys will see as you go to the charts, you'll get a feel for, you know, the inversion fair value gaps that feel better. And it exists right here. You see? This high, this low, it's small, but it gets inverted right there, right? So we got to take some profit above this high next. Uh, that would be our first take profit. But again, this is this thing's damn bullish, right? Kind of came down here, took out these lows, and then just blasted through this old high. This is what I'm talking about when I say when I get above an old high, I want candle body closes. I want them body candle closes above, not this weak wick stuff, right? When I'm breaking through a level, I want big body candle body closes above or below if you're bearish, right? I don't want these little wicks and then you break the fair value gap. That just screams, come take these lows, okay? So again, I hope this is helping you guys. I don't know how many of you tune in to the DeFi portion. I don't know how many tune into the trading stuff. I'll continue to do this stuff because again, like I said, it's all about helping somebody. Somebody someday is going to tune in, learn this stuff, and it's going to trigger them like it did me. And they're going to want to know everything there is to know about this stuff. And then there will be most people that are just like, yeah, 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 I got lucky, he's gambling, blah, blah, blah. I don't care, but I do know that it works. And if people are interested, I'll be the source that will help people. That's just truly the way I feel about it. I used to argue with people. I used to do, you know, the Twitter battles and you're wrong and this and that. And it's just not worth it, man. It's not because I found out at that point in my life that I just wasn't happy with what I was doing. So I would just argue with people and I was frustrated about how things were working out. But once you get it, you don't care about anything else because you know what's going to happen and you know it plays out over and over again. Yeah, let's just let's end there today. I know we got a little long. Again, if you guys are interested, check out Rivera Money, super cool platform and just kind of it's a hands-off approach, but still a hands-on, right? You just don't have to be monitoring those positions all the time, worrying if you're falling out of ranges and things like that. So thank you guys again so much for tuning in. We got a special one next week. Next week, I'm super excited. I'm an XRP OG Maxi, and we're going to have Panos, the founder of the, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, Anodos platform on next week is the DeFi Dive as everybody knows, or if you don't know, XRP, the XRPL just went with their AMM to pass. So now they have DeFi on the XRP Ledger platform. Again, controversial plat or controversial chain. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But we're going to bring it to you here. And we're going to talk about how their DeFi is just a little bit different than most EVMs and things like that. So again, I'm going to fanboy out a little bit. I've been an XRP holder since 2016. I'm the OG, talking X Rapid, X Via, those types of platforms. So 
to be interviewing one of the builders on the XRP Ledger. I'm super excited about it. So make sure if you guys are into that sort of thing and kind of want to just see a different perspective of AMMs and what you know other chains do and things like that, be sure to tune in. So thanks again, guys, so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, as always, hit me up on Telegram, X, in the chat here. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll catch you next week.